Right then, it's the world according to Ali, uh, episode 21, a little bit late again, because uh, it's Wednesday the 1st of June, I did say I was going to make it on Sunday, but you know what, I was dealing with some food poisoning on Sunday, and um, yeah, yeah, that wouldn't have been fun, but hmm, yeah, yeah, that's probably about as much information as you need. Uh, let's get on with the questions. I'm just playing around with a Garmin watch. Yeah! Stats, geeks, and all that goodness. So yeah, anyway, I won't bore you with that. Uh, so question one from Linda Johnson is, is there a specific number of minimum days a week you should do heavy lifting to improve strength, especially in relation to fitting in other training around this? It's a really good question. Right, uh, I do believe Mark Johnson added a bit. And Mark Johnson, I'll, I'll let this go on. Uh, he put, is there also a maximum number of days you should do heavy lifting? As in, are rest days as important as training days? It's just a really good question. Something I'm really into, frequency of training, okay? Um, now, in terms of like minimum numbers days a week you should do heavy lifting to improve strength. <sighs> See, what you're looking at really is there's a bit of a sliding scale here um, depending on your training history. So if you're someone that hasn't done a lot of heavy training, um, you can do actually very little and improve your strength. So at a rough guesstimate depending on your age and you know your other activities and stuff like that, you know, you could probably like get away, you could probably improve your strength for a while with like one session every 10 days. Um, that's pushing it a bit and that won't last forever. But I have trained people where I've trained them once a week, they haven't done any other strength training and they've been able to improve their strength just once a week for quite a while, you know. Um, I mean, we're talking like well over a year, you know. Um, and one of the things really what you're looking at is, is this is going to be something that changes as you change. And as you get further into your, you know, strength journey, it's, the, the, these things will change, right? But really what you're looking at is obviously are you improving strength? So if you're looking to do the bare minimum to improve your strength, as long as you know that you are objectively improving your strength, as in you're recording stuff, it's measured, you know, and so on and so forth, and you've got markers in place, and you know that your strength's improving, then just do just enough to keep that going up, you know? Because if you've got other training to fit in around it, you know, then it's one of those. If your priority is to get stronger, but you want to do other stuff, then just keep doing the minimum. And if your strength stops improving, then, um, you know, it may be that you need to up the frequency, or maybe that you know there are other factors involved. You know, um, bit of a loose question, but I think a lot of people, you know, they get thrown into this whole thing of like you got to train three, four days a week, standard, blah, 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 blah. And it's like you know what? That's not true. That's just not true. Um, you know, I mean, you can take that as it is. For I, I love to train every day. You know, so yeah. And then that goes to the next bit of the question. Is there also a maximum number of days you should do heavy lifting? No, there isn't. Honestly, you know, are rest days as important as training days? You know, there's this whole thing about, oh, you rest and that's when the training really happens, all the improvements really happen and when blah, 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 blah. Right? That's what sleep is for, in my opinion. If you're, you know, if you've got a good nutritious diet and you're sleeping, you know, then, um, I don't think there is a maximum. I think you can train heavy every single day. And before you fucking namby pambies out there, <laughs> as Linda would say, uh, <laughs> decry that. What you've got to remember is I'm talking about frequency, daily frequency of lifting heavy. I'm not talking about battering yourself every day, okay? Because that's dumb. But you can lift heavy. You can you can have daily frequency of near maximal lifts, you know, with low volume. Um, you know, non-exhaustive training methods and see improvements, you know, and I mean improvements across the board. You won't increase your wear and tear, you know, you'll increase your neurological ability, you know, you'll, you know, it's just, it can be done, 
you know, and it can be done naturally. That's important. So yeah, I would say minimum days a week you can do heavy lifting to improve strength. Depends on your trainability, but you know, a lot of people, an awful lot of people can make good improvement for a long time on just one day a week, okay? And is there a maximum number of days you should lift heavy? No, just no. So um, all you lazy motherfuckers out there, oh, I've got a rest day. No, you don't. Simple as that. Deal with it. <laughs> right then, question two. Oh, fucking hell, question two, from Emma Markham. <laughs> Bingo wings. What is the best exercise, other than them dippy things you do on the squat racks, <laughs> to eliminate those unsightly bits of flab? Now this question is really, really fucking painful, right? And it is a shit question, okay? It's fucking dog shit, this question. Like, I mean, like, as questions come and go, it's fucking awful, right? Now, now that I've hammered that point home, this is actually an incredibly valid topic to approach because there's so many people that ask this question or frame uh, problems in this way. And they ask a question that is unsolvable. By the way, fat motherfuckers, I'm eating vegetables. Um, so, you get bingo wings, you get people going, oh, what's the best exercise to sort out my belly, stuff like that, right? It's a dog shit question. Because the problem is, right, is the fat and muscle are two completely separate tissues. And I've said this numerous times before. You sometimes get a little bit annoyed with having to repeat yourself, but fuck it, whatever. This is to help people, so I'll take it on the chin. Right, so, bingo wings, yeah? Skin, fat, so on and so forth, right? Muscle is something completely separate. Now, dippy things that you do on squat racks, dips or, or any other exercise that works the triceps hard, works the triceps, okay? And if you get stronger in that exercise and you know you eat towards that goal, you can make the triceps bigger, right? Or make them stronger, so on and so forth. But that's not the same thing as getting rid of bingo wings, right? Bingo wings are flab. And flab is all down to stored energy, excess calories, okay? Yeah, there's the hormonal stuff, but whatever. That's going a bit too far. Let's start with the basics, okay? Basically, you cannot, right? You cannot spot reduce fat, flat out, okay? You can change muscle so like for example in a particular area so if you wanted to make your right arm bigger than your left arm you can with muscle but you cannot reduce or spot reduce fat on a particular area of your body it just goes according to the hormonal effect that you have on your body which is why men and women change shape as they gain and lose fat weight because they have different hormone balances which causes different positioning of fat and use of fat around the body okay So, there is no such answer to what is the best exercise to deal with bingo wings. The art, there's no answer, okay? And this is why this question is a problem and it's such a common question because no motherfucker can answer it. So you ask this question and you seek it out. You go, oh, what about this exercise? What about dumbbell horse wanking, yeah? That works the bingo wings. No, it fucking doesn't. Fuck's sake. Fuck off. Yeah? So what you have to do is you have to ask a totally different question. Otherwise, you'll be trapped in a loop forever and ever and ever. 
looking for this exercise, this magic fucking thing that will cure your problem. If you've got bingo wings, you're fat. There you go. Controversial, right? Whatever, okay? It's not controversial. You, you are. If you've got fat that you want to get rid of, that means you're fatter than you'd like to be. Ergo, you're fat. Right, cool. So, the way to deal with that is lose some weight with a calorie deficit, okay? And just generally lift a heavy weight to make the body prioritize keeping muscle tissue over fat tissue, okay? That's the best way to reduce body fat is that plan right there, simply, okay? And fuck all the specific exercises and all these fucking cunts out there that say, this is a great fat burning exercise. Fuck you, you fucking charlatan. You're either dishonest or stupid. Fuck off, it's not how it works. Um, yeah, think I've answered everything there. Fucking bingo wings. <laughs> okay, question three from David Griffiths. I often find myself sliding into the same lifts with the same sets and reps. What can I do to progress? And um, <laughs> the answer is like one of those really sort of simple ones, you know, get stronger. And that's really flippant and not very helpful, is it? But you know what, there's a lot of people that they fall into the habit of doing the same thing. And basically, what you need to do to stop yourself falling into the habit of doing the same thing is to strive to not do the same thing. But even if you're doing the same lifts, record everything, right? So let's say that one day, one, one day you come in and you're doing bench press and you've always bench pressed you know, uh, 100 kilo for five reps, right? So what I would say to you is like, okay, you can measure, here's, here's, here's something you can apply, okay? Measure three things, right? You do your 100 kilo for five reps, right? Then after you've done that and you've had enough rest, take off 10 kilo and you've got 90 kilo or 90%, 90%. Do as many reps as you can, yeah, have a rest. Then take off another 10%, so you've now got 80 kilo, and do, again, as many reps as you can, right? The following week, on your heaviest set, right, go for 102.5 kilo. See if you can get five reps. If you can't get five reps, make a note of how many reps you do. Then, knock off 10%, do 92 and a half kilo. Right? See if you can get the same amount of reps as you did on 90 kilo last week. Then again, knock off another 10%, 82 and a half kilo. See if you can do the same amount of reps as you did last week with 80 kilo. Right? And if you find that when you went to that 102.5 kilo weight and you could only do three reps, next week do 102.5 kilo and try and do four reps. And then the week after that, try and do five reps. Once you can do five reps, go up to 105 kilo. Yeah? And if you find that you can't make progress on the main heavy lift, then try and eke out one extra rep on the ones where you take off 10%. Okay? So, look for tiny, tiny, the smallest possible increases you can. Even if it's one extra rep on your third set, the 80% set. That one extra rep signals progress. You keep adding in enough of those little, little tiny bit of bots, you will get stronger, okay? It doesn't take, it's not quick, it just takes a long fucking time, but keep looking for those little markers. And then that will stop you sliding into the same lifts, sets and reps, okay? Um, you've just got to have the mindset of like, try and sensibly beat numbers. Don't be an idiot spaz about it or a rage monster or anything like that and hurt yourself but yeah that's just a little sample um yeah good luck laters